guitar slingers welcome to my tutorial today about compression within the AX8 this tutorial is going to have three questions first is what is compression and I'll give you a brief rundown about what compression does and how you can use it which compression types are in the AX8 and along with that I'll be including a tip for you to use uh, the compression within your amp instead of a compression pedal. What are the parameters? So I'll be explaining all the different parameters for the three different types of compression effect that are inside the AX8. Let's get into it. Compression deals with the input signal coming from your guitar. It's trying to manage the levels that are coming in. It might pump up a level that's too low or it may bring back a level that's too high. Another thing that compression tries to do, it will try to make the sound or the decay linger for longer. Some players equate that with sustain. You know, if you, if you give your compression more sustain, the notes that you're playing on the guitar will sing for a little bit longer. That's the main purpose of compression just to keep levels within a certain setting and to give your guitar the impression that it's sustaining for longer than it actually is. What's the downside? The downside of compression is some players feel that they lose all the transients or that it removes you know, all the dynamics that are within their playing. Uh, just a brief explanation of what transients are. Transients, I like to think of transients as the sounds that create sounds. For guitar players, that's usually the sound of your fingers crossing the strings or the sound of your pick cutting across the strings and it creates little scraping sounds and that those are the sounds that go into producing the actual note that you're making. An envelope is constructed of three parts, attack, sustain and decay. Those are the three elements. With attack comes transients which are those tiny little sounds that I was just talking about that as I was saying that's the downside to compression. Uh, some people think it's it just makes the sound too manufactured or it doesn't have the original life that it had when it was first created. Let's click on compression. Come down to the left and in effect type, if we click on that, you're going to see four options come up. Dynamics, pedal comp one, pedal comp two, studio comp. Those are the four options that you have inside the AX8 for compression. While we're here, there is a little tip that I can give you. If, for example, you may not have enough CPU up here to have a, an individual block assigned to compression, there is some built-in compression within the amp block. If you have an amp selected, let's go down here, effect type, Sir Badger 18, doesn't matter which type of amp I have. Let's go across to the pages and scroll down from basic down to dynamics. Click on dynamics and here you're going to see comp type and these parameters come up. They are not as detailed and explicit as the options for compression in a dedicated compression block but nonetheless you can still use these to give yourself some control over the compression. Let's move down to the dynamics effect type for compression. These are the parameters that we have at our disposal. Dynamics is an interesting one. It has two ways that it can be set. It can be set to negative values, down to negative 10 and across to positive 10. If you set it to negative values, it's gonna act as a stereotypical compressor. If you set it to positive values, it's going to act as an expander. An expander, contrary to its name, for me, doesn't actually kind of expand stuff. What an expander is going to do is it's going to select a certain threshold level and anything below that, it's gonna drop its volume down. In the extreme sense, it kind of acts like a noise gate or a noise limiter. If something doesn't meet a particular level, it will cut that level down. Attack in musical sense, it's how quickly the compressor jumps into action when dealing with the transients or the first part of the sound when it's created. Attack is like a doorman or a bouncer outside a nightclub. I like to think of attack as how quickly 
that person, that bouncer, is going to react to Riff Raff coming in the club. So you can think about it as reaction time to the first part of the sound. Release concerns itself with sustain and decay, which is part of the three components that make up the envelope. What it's trying to do is apply a certain amount of gain according to a ratio that is set. So for example, if the signal drops by one dB, then according to the ratio that the release is set to, it may try to add on half a dB or a quarter of a dB. Filter sets a high pass filter frequency on the input detector stage of the compressor as it can clean up your mix. It's really, really similar to the drive pedals. So I'm just gonna bring up a drive pedal here. Any drive pedal, it doesn't matter. And you have this low cut frequency. You know, it's like a high pass filter. Essentially, that's what it's doing. On most mixes, you see there's a high pass filter 80 hertz and it means anything below 80 hertz is cut by a certain amount of decibels so if we jump back to the compression that's what this filter does it cleans up frequencies below a certain range so it's actually acting as a high pass filter you can check that out in my other tutorials drive pedals and 12 ways to adjust gain in an amp we have this auto button here it can be turned on and off if it's engaged it turns the dynamic attack filter on or off what that means is it will follow the way that you're playing. It's pretty amazing actually. If you're playing hard and fast and you've got a lot of transients coming through, this will react to that. If you're playing a bit more softly and you know the transients aren't really there, then it's gonna react to that. So it follows the input. Look ahead is just like the bouncer or the door guy. He looks ahead and he sees potential trouble. If he's looking out into the car park, then you know there's a group of people gathering he can go out there, he can see that it's happening and prevent any sort of mischief occurring before it does. That's what this effect here is doing. Look ahead is used when the fast transients are too quick for the input detector to manage. This will create a short delay that allows the gain time to react. You have a detector stage in your compressor and you also have the gain stage. It's taking that input, it's dealing with the fast transients and then it's sending it out again. Of course, that takes a little bit of time for it to do. Depending on how you set this, you may have an audible delay in the response time between the time that your signal enters and the time that it's released in the output stage. Pedal Comp 1. Let's move across to parameters and you'll notice that two things have changed. Sustain has replaced Dynamics and filter has been replaced by emphasis. So I'm just gonna talk about sustain and emphasis here. Sustain increases the compression amount from zero up to 10. Emphasis is all about kind of the side chain. So there's no side chain setting for pedal comp one. So what it's doing is this is going to pre-emphasize the high frequencies prior to compression and then it's going to de-emphasize them afterwards. That is what the emphasis parameter controls. From zero across to 10. From what I could gather, pedal comp two is exactly the same as pedal comp one. I scoured and scoured and scoured the internet for information. I read all the manuals and I couldn't find anything on pedal comp two. There could be some other algorithms running around in the back in here, but to be honest, I couldn't be sure. Let's move across to the parameters. You'll notice that several are the same. We've got the look ahead, filter, attack, release, auto. All we need really concern ourselves with here is threshold, ratio, knee, detect, side chain select and makeup. All right then, let's head back to threshold. Threshold is the point at which something happens. That's how I like to think about it. It means you're at that point where something major is gonna happen. Automatic volume reduction. So that's what the threshold is doing. It's just setting that point where that volume reduction is gonna kick in. Ratio controls the input to output. It sets the ratio at which the decibel levels are altered by. 
for example, if we have 10 dB coming in, then that's going to be reduced at a ratio 2 to 1. So it will become 5. If we set it at 10 to 1 and we've got 100 dB coming in, then it's going to be 10. Interestingly enough, we can set ratio to infinite. If you set it to infinite, you're turning your compressor into a limiter and it will reduce the signal to the threshold that you've set here. Knee. One of the easiest ways for me to explain knee is that a lot of compression works with straight lines. So when you see it represented on a graph, you may have your threshold here and it, you know, there's a graph and there's a, a line here and threshold is at 41 dB and it comes along like that. And you've got a line representing your sound and it's coming up here and it, that's a straight line as well. And then this ratio kicks in. What you've got is a lot of straight lines and that can sound really unpleasant. It can sound really, really unnatural. This has been introduced into some compressors, studio compressors in particular, and we have the type of knee or softening of this threshold and ratio relationship. Instead of it just being like a jagged edge like this, say for example, it's like that here, this will soften it. So instead of it just going bang like that, it's gonna come around just like the shape of a knee. We have four settings, hard, soft, softer, and softest. So that's more about the curvature of that knee. Trying to make the compression sound as natural as possible. Detect options. Here we have fast RMS, peak, RMS, RMS, plus peak. So let's have a brief explanation about what that is. For guitarists, most of the time you would choose the setting peak. And that means when the input is coming in and it's peaking, Detect will respond instantaneously to the input level. Now that's great in some circumstances, but it can result in a rapid gain reduction, which will sound pretty unnatural. Or in the worst case scenario, it can even introduce some distortion. But you know, it's guitar, so that can often be a really good setting. Let's just look at these other ones. We have RMS. RMS is a, it's a maths term. It means root, well, it stands for root mean square. I don't truly understand what that is. Maths was never really my strong point, but what it was designed to do is make it smoother and more pleasant to a human ear or more resembling what might happen in real life rather than peak, for example, which will just deal with it immediately. RMS sort of takes its time a little bit and tries to make it sound more natural. The beautiful thing in here is that we have a combination, fast RMS, it's closer to peak and then here we have the best of both worlds RMS and peak makeup is all about gain for compressors we know that compressors they tend to reduce the amount of gain at the beginning and then try to increase it at the end to give you a more even sound or signal through your guitar rig what the makeup gain tries to do is it'll add gain at the output stage if you've lost some gain in here, the makeup gain will attempt to add it back at the end. A little tip here, you can flick that off and you can adjust it more finely using the level across here in the mixer. That's another way of reintroducing any gain that may have been lost with your settings in here. Sidechain select. So let's click on that. Quite a few options come up in the drop down menu. We have block L, this is the standard or default setting block R, input 1, input 2, and rows 1 to 4. To explain sidechain select, I'm going to put a little picture up on my on the video and you can see how exactly it works. What it's dealing with is a signal coming in from another source and it's going to try to match the gains of each one. A, a live world example of this is a real world example of this is listening to DJs or radio announcers when there's music playing and then they decide to speak over the top there's a dialogue and you can hear the music cutting back what that means is they've got their voice in a side chain so the music is going through the main input and in the side chain they've got their voice the compressor reacts to their voice and it will lower the signal from the main input and match it up with what's coming in from the side. Another real world example of using a sidechain 
it was particularly used in a kick, with a kick drum. A kick drum can take up a lot of the spectral frequency when you're mixing different instruments together. A quite common recording technique is to sidechain the kick drum. That's the end of the tutorial for compression inside the AX8. I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. If you have, please press a like. If you want to make sure that you're kept up to date with everything that I'm doing in the AX8 world, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out and it encourages me to do more and more and more of these tutorials. Let your fingers fly with compression.